Hey everyone, in today's video I'm sharing four fun summer tear tray DIY ideas. And this video is also part of the Corey's Minis Challenge. I'll share more about her and the playlist in just a little bit. If you're new here, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. And if you enjoy that too, please be sure and hit that subscribe button. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. I've mentioned before many times that you can create super cute stuff and not necessarily have to have fancy tools or anything like that. All I'm doing is taking some scrap cardboard and you know that I know that most of y'all have at least a box or two lying around and I'm cutting, cutting out a lemon shape that I drew on it. I do have a helper for this part, but again, you don't need a helper. This is super easy. All I'm doing is just tracing around and then cutting out two leaves out of plain old cardboard. This is not anything fancy. It's not anything hard, I promise. And I'm taking some Waverly Folk Art paint in the color plaster and I'm just painting one side of the lemon shape. I didn't really have to do that, but since the cardboard is a darker color, I thought it would help me to not have to do too many coats of the yellow paint. And I thought it gave me a lighter base to start with too. But keep in mind, this is gonna make the cardboard quote unquote wetter because it's paper. So it does take a little bit longer to dry and that's why I didn't wanna to do too many coats of any of the colors because I'm trying to minimize that. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this kind of warped as it dried and I tried to press it da back down gently, but I didn't want to work the cardboard too hard and I didn't want to leave an obvious crease or anything like that. So I was thinking that I could have let it dry partially and then maybe like laid it face down on some wax paper or something and put a book or something like that on top of it to keep it flat. But I may try that next time I work with cardboard. But speaking of books, in our book club we're reading Soka's Journey by Heather Morris. And have you ever read that? Let me know in the comments below. But now, onto the leaves. I'm starting off by just giving them a coat of green paint. And then because they kind of keep moving around on me, I took some painter's tape and attached that to the back um, so I could attach them to my painting mat so that they stay in place and I could finish painting them. And I'm taking this lighter color green and while the first coat of the paint is still wet, I'm kind of making swooshy lines to simulate the veins of the leaves. And then I'm taking another darker shade of green and adding more swooshy lines. And they're a bit subtle, but I'm working from the less is more angle and just continuing to build up at this point. And I just add more swooshy lines <laughs> using the two colors I started with until I feel it looks like a leaf or until it looks like I want. I add some white paint to kind of highlight some of the areas of the leaf. And if you get too heavy handed with this, don't worry. You can always soften it up with one of the green paints you just used. I'm taking these four shades of yellow and I'm gonna add some dimension to the lemon. The exact four shades are not important. It's more about the color variation. I just chose one of the colors and added it to my lemon shade. And I just wanna say again, the exact color I'm using is not important. I could have chosen any of the colors to start with. I really could have even used more colors to be honest, but the different shades will add some dimension and texture to this piece. And what I'm doing with one of the lighter shades is adding some swooshy lines, just kind of freehanding it. I do use a couple of different shades to get the effect that I want. Now I'm taking a couple of the paints and I'm dipping the handle end of my paintbrush in and then making dots on the lemon. You know how lemon has like that dimply texture? Well, that's what I'm trying to mimic. So I'm not putting it all over just in a few sections and I start off with one color, add the dots in different areas and then I go back with another color and add some more dots around them. I did not use my Cricut for this part for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to show you that you can just freehand stuff. Is my handwriting perfect here? Nope, but I think it turns out fine. And the other reason is because I wasn't super sure how a decal would transfer. I need to test that out before I have another DIY fail on my hands. So uh, I wish I hadn't gone back 
over the letters as I like the first pass just fine. This one wouldn't have been very easy to correct, but again, freehanding is fine and I think it looks super cute in my opinion. I start to go around the lemon with some dashes and dots, but I didn't do that to the leaves, so I decided to go back and fill in the edge of the lemon with my black paint pen. Now it's time to glue it all together. I glued the leaves together first and then glued that onto the lemon. And in hindsight, I kind of should have penciled in where the leaves were going to go so I could center my writing better, but y'all, it's still cute. So now, I'm gonna do the reveal of all the pieces at the end, so let's get going on DIY number two. I'm painting this little tray in the color alabaster. Oh, I don't know why I keep saying alabaster, it's plaster. Anyways, this is actually a tray, those little wood pieces that I just got from Dollar Tree came in, and it's similar to what Hobby Lobby sells, but obviously cheaper. I have marked off the tray, and I'm using some washi tape that I got from Dollar Tree, and then painting it gray. The washi tape worked fine for this project, but and I know washi tape is not super sticky, but it didn't stick very well to the envelope I just mailed and it kept lifting up. So a word to the wise, if you use it and you buy it, it may not be as sticky as you think, but it worked fine for this project. I got these fruit shapes last year at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna be using the pineapple one for this project. I'm painting the pineapple yellow and the leaves green, duh. Oh, well, you know, honestly, you can paint whatever color your heart desires. I've seen the pink and neutral colors, whatever works for you, that's what you need to paint your pineapple. Next, I'm taking a lighter shade of whatever color you're painting your pineapple, and I'm adding some diagonal crisscross lines. And then I took Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm just adding some small strokes of paint to simulate the, um, I literally don't know what you call the things on the outside of the pineapple. I'm just trying to add some dimension to it, but now I'm wondering what the outside is called. Does it have a name? You're gonna have to let me know in the comments below, but I, I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to make those like diamond shapes on there. I'm adding little dots all around this piece because I thought it would look fun. And last but not least, I glue the pineapple to the middle and I'm just leaving mine like this, but you could add like Hello Summer or Aloha or something to give it a little extra oomph to it. Hey y'all, this video is part of Corey's Minis Challenge playlist. A link to her awesome channel below and the entire playlist will be in the description box as well. So please check it out and tell Corey I sent ya. DIY number three. This one is super easy to do and you will use up one of those jars you've been saving. I mean, if you're a jar saver like me. I'm taking two shades of green so that this bottom portion will have some dimension to it. and I'm painting it all the way around. And I'm not using any special paint, although they do make paint for glass, but I didn't, I didn't tape it off either as I didn't want it to look too neat. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm taking some paint in the color watermelon and painting the top portion. And I'm intentionally leaving that center strip empty. And yeah, I'm just kind of eyeballing it again. I'm doing a rough coat of paint in the color plaster in the empty section. And I did go back and give the green and red sections another coat of paint. And now I'm using a black paint pen to add seeds. And I'm taking the white paint and I'm going over that center line and trying to make that line squiggly, kind of like that watermelon sign that I did in my last video. What's Crafty DIYs on a Budget? It's the crafting group on Facebook that I run with my dear friend Sarah from GGB DIY. The link to all the fun is gonna be below, so check it out and come and join us. For DIY number four, 
which is the last one for this video, um, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a garland. And it's really easy, I promise. This strand of beads is from Dollar Tree. I haven't seen them sell them lately, but you can find other shapes of beads there or buy them on Amazon. I have some linked in the description box below if you need them. So count out the number of beads you'll need or want, and you can either paint them or leave them natural. I'm painting these in the color plaster and I prefer to paint them on a skewer. I got mine from the Dollar Tree and I just put a piece of tape on one end and then leave the pointy end open so I can more easily thread my beads on. And I'm using the skewer method to paint these a berry color. And this set of beads is getting a coat of green paint. I have help for this part again. <laughs> so this heart shape came in a huge pack from Hobby Lobby in the his and her section on sale, of course. Marvin, my awesome hubby, did drill two holes in each upper section of that heart that you see right there. And if you don't have a drill, no worries. You could just hot glue it to the garland. And I'll explain how to do that in just a bit. And I'm just painting it the same color berry as the beads. Now take a white paint pen and add some little marks all over the beads. Not too many because these marks will be the seeds for your strawberry bead. So did you know we were making strawberries? <laughs> well, now you do. Do the same for the heart that you painted. And did you know that you could turn the strawberry into a heart into a strawberry? Well, here you go. I'm showing you how to do it. Now the hardest part is assembling it all and it's really not that hard at all. So I had Marvin drill two holes in it as I was going to loop the twines through to attach it to the garland. And remember earlier, I told you I was going to tell you what to do if you didn't have a drill. Well, like I said, no worries at all. You will just hot glue it to the top of the heart where it dips down and it's going to be covered up in a bit. So it works well and actually maybe even works better. But one thing I forgot to mention was that I put painter's tape or masking tape tape on the end of the jute twine and I twist it to create kind of like a needle. I mean, it's not really a needle, but it's a very sturdy pointy thing and it makes it easy to thread the beads on. And I'm going with two white, a red, a green, and then two white again. And then I'm just repeating that pattern until I'm out of beads. I cut out a strawberry leaf shape from some green felt. And this is the part where I said it would cover up your jute twine if you just hot glued it. I made two and I glued one side down to start with. And this is a little hard to say, but there are two strands of jute twine and one has the beads on it and one doesn't. And I'm taking the one that doesn't and threading it back up into the beads so that you can't see that little tail end, I guess. And I don't go all the way with it, but I go up several beads so that it stays in place. And then I'm hot gluing on the other strawberry leaf on the other side. So it just kind of covers up that little end there. And to make the tassel, I just wrapped the jute twine around my hand. And I think I only did like 10 times on this one. Um, and before I attach the tassel to the garland, I'm tying a piece of jute twine around towards the top of the looped jute twine, because <laughs> this makes the head of the tassel. And I made sure that the piece was long enough to blend in with the tassel. And then I clip the ends and make sure it's all even. And when you go to attach the tassel, I try to knot it as close to the beads as I can. I give it just a little bit of wiggle room, but I like it to be really close. I then thread the rest of the twine back up through the beads. I think it gives it a much cleaner, more finished look when you don't see those tails like poking out anywhere. And y'all, this is how all of my DIYs turned out. I think they all look great, but I really love the strawberry garland and the water glass jar, watermelon glass jar. And I have to admit, I'm pretty proud of the detailing on the lemon peas. And of course the neutral pineapple piece also speaks to my heart. I just love them all. I just really love all the detail on this piece. And you know, neutral colors are my jam. 
And this watermelon jar would be so fun at a gathering. And this cute garland is perfect tear tray essential. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I'm gonna have a link to Corey's channel and the playlist in the description box below. I sure hope you check that out. And don't forget, if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's our great house. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.